good morning to all i'm very happy that for the last one week you might be uncovering a lot of different facets of your life that you are going to have at shastra i am pr i'm very happy that for the last I am P.R. Nare from the School of Chemical and Biotechnology and today we are going to see about the part two of the online education. We had the first session last week where I told you about how to activate your Gmail, how to have recovery email address and phone number and also showed about how to add the GCR, add yourself into the GCR. I'll continue that today and I'll also show about the timetable and the student web interface. So this is the plan for today. I'll revisit GCR. I will showcase about your timetable. I will tell you how to read your timetable with the GCR code. And I also talk about the Google Calendar and joining the Google Meet. Now, you are, you are already joining the live stream, but I'll revisit how you can do it for your course and how you can upload your assignments. The same assignment submission, maybe you might have it for your test also. It, it is called as assignment, but essentially it is the same. And then we will also have about uh, the students and parent interface. So this is the plan for today. Now let's make this active at the beginning, like last time. We will have a Mentimeter uh, interaction. I would request all of you, those who are seeing on laptop, to go to this link, menti.com, and put this code on a tab, just the next tab. If you are seeing on a Chrome browser, just open a next tab and then put this. Those who are uh, seeing on mobile, you can just switch the app and if you have already installed Mentimeter app, then you can use the code. So go to menti.com and put the code 58335548. You will see a thumbs up icon and just click on that and let us wait for people to join them. So I will share that screen probably. So put the thumbs up icon and if you can come back to the Google Meet, you can see how many people have joined. So if you can see that the numbers are increasing, 284, 300, something. So go to menti.com and put the code 58335548. Double five four eight. I think you are also using menti.com. I could see in other orientation, I think in also for some of the max refresher classes. And this is not only going to be only during the orientation. I'm very sure in many of the courses, lots of our faculty will use uh, eventually this Mentimeter so that we can have better interaction uh, during the class. And it is very important to interact. Otherwise, it will become stale and you will not get that enthusiasm to learn, right? So I would wish, by the time still some students are joining, I would wish that you will also take initiatives to be very interactive, not only in this orientation. This orientation is to orient you towards your four years of academic life at Shastra, which also encompasses a lot of other beyond the curriculum learning. So make sure you take all efforts to be interactive and express yourself. So you'll just wait for a minute till uh, our students join that. So we have about uh, 2,000 students, I think. So let us see at least if 1,000 students join. If you are on laptop, just open in another tab, go to menti.com, put this code that you now see on the screen. The code is 
on the Google Meet screen, menti.com 58335548 that you see in the top of the screen. And there will be a thumbs up icon. You have to just click at that thumbs up icon. Okay, so let me go to the next slide. Where there is a poll might have been asked. So just give your response. Just give your response and you can come back to the Google Meet. I have hidden the answers as of now. Let's get some response and then I will talk about this. So you will see a question. You need to just respond. And you can come back to the Google Meet and you can just wait by the time let some people answer. So we have about 350 students who have already answered this. I think the numbers are increasing. Good. Yeah, about uh, 900 have answered. So let me just see the answers now. Oh, good. So most of you then that means know that this is a Google account. And good that some of you learn now. So there are two things I want to convey in this slide. One, yes, you know the information. That's obvious. The next thing is, it is not about not knowing an information. You should be willing to know it. You should be happy that at least now you learned it. So that's why the second option, I did not write it as no. I just write it as at least good that now I learned it. Now I I'm, came to be aware of it. Right? So it is good that we will always be open to learning. Your register number at shastra.ac.in is a Google account. So that means like how you have your personal Gmail, this is also a Google linked account. So that means everything that you can otherwise do in Gmail, you can also do it in your AC or in. Now let's go to the next question. Now here again, there is a question. Let's wait for your response. So the question is, do you know how to join the Google Classroom? So uh, I'm going to use in many places the same word Google Classroom. So I have put it as a, an uh, acronym as GCR, uh, Google Classroom. So do we know how to join the Google Classroom? So let's for, wait for a minute. Let's give time for people to respond. For those of you who have not yet joined uh, the Mentimeter, you can just go to the tab on menti.com on your URL or if you have installed Mentimeter app, just put menti.com and use the code that you see on the top of the screen, 58335548 to answer, to take part in this. So about a thousand people have already answered as I talk. So let's see the results. Okay, so this is uh, again good information for me. So we have about 700 of you who are actually now watching who or 800 of you who are now watching who know how to join GCR. But we should also acknowledge and we should also be emphatically aware that we also do have about uh, 400 means 500 students who need to know how to join a GCR. So I would certainly after this Mentimeter interaction once again revise that so that it is clear to all and we make sure that everybody learns how to join the GCR. Thanks for your response. So after this Mentimeter uh, response, I would uh, uh, showcase how to join a GCR. Let's go to the next uh, question.
right do you know how to change your password for your register number at shastra.ac.in email account so there are some spelling uh, gaps so you please uh, ignore it i'm sorry for the same so even in the option i think there is some small gap the first option is yes i know how to change it right the second one is yes and i have changed it already the third option please read it as no can you kindly explain it these are the three options so let's have your options and then i'll go it i have uh, masked the answers so that i just want to know what is the answer i mean what is the option rather i would not say what is the answer like i will say what is the option it is wait uh so about 1000 students have already answered so let's see the results oh good there are fairly large number of people who know how to answer uh, i mean how to uh, change the password and there are fairly a large number of people who have already changed it also so that is good so that's nice and there are some people who do not know how to change nothing to worry again i will explain this after this end of this mentimeter uh, interaction so this is how always an uh, a class atmosphere also will be there right some of us will already know what is being taught some of us might not know so those who know should come forward to help those who do not know and the vice versa those who do not know you should feel free to seek and then get that information learn that information this learning is what is very important and we need to we need not have any hesitation in learning so thanks for your response let me go to the next slide and see what i have right now here again uh, i just want to know whether you can set or have you set your recovery email and password for your ac.in account have you set your email and password for your uh, ac.in account let's see the response so have you set the recovery and password for your ac.in account so let me now display the results okay good here again it is more or less same like how uh, people told about their gcr you can see that about 800 of us uh, already know you earlier told that you know how to set uh, join gcr and probably you have also changed uh, your login uh, recovery email and password and about uh, 400 plus you wanted to know now so that's nice i will showcase this also once again for the good benefit of all uh just a minute i think uh yeah so sorry i think i should go to the next slide so now on the next slide on your mentimeter i just want to know how many of you have installed these tools that you see here you will be able to select more than one tool right i mean it is a multiple select uh, question is what i have asked so you can select all the tools that you have installed in your uh, mobile right if you have not installed anything it's okay you need not answer probably
you have not installed, sorry, I did not give the information of uh, not having any of these tools because I thought that probably one or the other you will certainly have in your uh, uh, mobile. So that is why like there is none of the tools option I did not provide. I think I should have included that also. So we got about a, a good number of response. Let's see that which of these tools uh, you have installed. Yeah. So fairly everybody has Gmail and Google Classroom, Google Drive, Google Meet. Good. Now, I would only request here that please make sure that you install all these apps in your mobile. I'm presuming that you have a good space. It does not take so much space, right? Or you can create space by removing unwanted uh, apps or the apps that you rarely use uh, in your mobile. And please install all these apps because these will be useful to you in your online education and link these apps with your ac.in also. I repeat, kindly install these apps in your mobile. That's first instruction. The second instruction is after installing, please link your register number at shastra.ac.in along with this so that you can also get notifications of your ac.in on your mobile. So kindly install and once installing, please link it with your register number at shastra.ac.in in your mobile also. Let me go to the next uh, question. Oh, so now this Mentimeter, we are going to pause because too much we have already asked. So we will pause at this point and I will come back to my uh, slides. Wherein I, or I'll come back to the demo that I want to show with respect to timetable and stuff like that. So let me just uh, come out of this presentation screen and I would uh, share probably my entire screen. Right. So the first one, the first one that we are going to see is how to change the password in your ac.in, how to set the recovery, mobile number and email address. I am logging from a demo student account. Now you, I'm sure you have logged in or you just log in with your register number at ac.in. So that's a Gmail account. So much like any gmail.com, go to gmail.com. So if you go to gmail.com and uh, in your username and password, so put uh, in your username and password on the Gmail screen. So you have to put register number at shastra.ac.in. So whatever is your register number, your register number could be like 125 something 002, 001, something like that at shastra. I'm just putting a random number like this. You have to log in. This is a Gmail account. Once you logged in, click on here and go to manage your account. So at the top, you will mind having a shastra logo. This is a demo account, so it is not having that. Where you have your name, you just click on manage your Google account. It will open a page and in that click on security. So I repeat at the top, go to manage your account, click on security and in the security. So where you will have this password, it says when you have last changed it, you just click it again. It will again ask you to enter your current password. Please enter your current password. And then in the next screen, you can change it. I'm not changing it now, but you can change it for your end. So I repeat, you have to go to this manage your Google account. So at this top, if you click, you will see manage your Google account. On this manage.google account, go to security. In this security, go to this password, click here, 
give the existing password and then it goes to the next screen where you can change the password so i hope you know now how to change it you can change it maybe after the session but please make a note of it the next one is how to set the recovery email and mobile number why it is important it is important because it is quite natural that we might forget our existing password so when you forget you should be able to retrieve it you should not become anxious and there's no need to uh, uh, write to office here you yourself will be able to retrieve provided you set your recovery email and password so for this also click here at the top go to this manage your google account go to manage your google account go to security go to security and then you will see here earlier you changed this password right that's what i was showing now what i'm showing is recovery phone and email so you just add your mobile number or add your personal gmail address like say if i click this again it will ask me for a password so the existing password that you have to put and you need to add a recovery phone add a recovery phone and otp will come uh, to your uh, 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 otp will come to your uh, mobile number and give that otp and that recovery uh, number will get added on right i'm not doing it now right i'm just showing it similarly click on this uh, add email address recovery email address again it will ask you to enter your current password and then you give your gmail your personal gmail that you have and verify it so that means a code will go a g code will go to your uh, uh, gmail your personal gmail and enter that and the recovery email address gets added so this is how you should add i would wish everybody should have added this recovery password and gmail uh, email address so that in case even if you forget your password you should be able to recover it the next one good thing that i want you to practice is to have from day one you have to conduct yourself as a members of the professional body what i mean by members of the professional body is you are going to get graduated you are going to become uh, the graduated citizens of the society of the next society that we are going to build for the world at large so you need to conduct yourself with the expected attributes of a matured person now whenever you send email it is always good to have an email signature what i mean by a signature now you might be knowing the hard copy signature right we sign a letter we sign a document and that signature is an identifier for who is signing it who is the uh, person who is writing that piece of document similarly it is expected that you should have your primary details as part of every email and this is achieved by something called an uh, uh, this is achieved by something called by having an email signature you might have got email uh from the orientation email id and you might have noticed in the bottom there is something called uh, uh, an orientation shastra university all these things that's actually your uh, email or signature of your email now i will show you how to do that all you have to click it you can either say get the, set a signature here that you see here now on my screen or you can do is click on this settings click on the settings and see all settings and click on the see all settings go to something called signature go to something called signature by default there will be nothing so you have to create a new one so write your name so whatever is your name like say for example my name is narain so i'll just write narain and here you need to create your signature a good a commonly good accepted signature is something like this like thanks and best regards i'll put my name and after that i will have a separator 
let's say then i will write my uh, full name i will write what is my course so i will put maybe i'm a first year uh, btech I, let me just see it is. okay uh, come back. yeah so i if i am let's say studying btech chemical engineering i'm choosing chemical engineering because i am from that department so just like that i just want to choose that i'm from the school of chemical and biotech so i'll write i'm a first year btech chemical engineering i will also write my register number so my register number could be something like this 12500201 right then i will say i am from school of chemical and biotechnology i'll put then shastra green to be university and i'll put tanjavur i'll put the place the state and the pin code and if you are okay you will put your mobile number okay and then again i will put a separator and i want this signature to be added every time i send an email so i will say for emails use this and for reply also use this and then i will save it i repeat you go to settings go to signature by default there won't be anything you need to create you can create any number of signature depending on to whom you want to write for what purpose you want to write i created one so if you click this it will get created you have to add your name you have to add uh, your register number which year you are studying so every year you are supposed to change and then tell it is you are a second year third year and fourth year and the, the school the place pin code and your mobile number you need to at least say that which signature you want to use for your new emails and for your replying and just save it now like this if you now compose can you see this it automatically gets added so now if you send any email to any faculty to any friend to any company person to our office they will exactly know who is writing if you don't have this if you don't have this then many a times all your information you might not write and that will help us not to reach you out also right so it is always better to have this even when you respond to an email like say for example i am responding to this email and you can see that it will get added right it will get added at the bottom right so i repeat i would wish all of you create your email signature how to do that click on the settings go to see all settings go to this signature by default let me just copy this uh, so that i can delete also and then show you so by default there won't be anything you need to click new you can just put your name and i'll say this is my email signature for shastra so that means if when i send it to shastra then i will type all this you can even add colors like if you want your name to be shown in bold so whatever you can add color you can add uh, headers like this you can make it bold and all these things is also doable after that for what signature you want to use you need to choose that in your replace and your new email and then save it once this is done whenever you compose you can see that it will get added so let's have this practice from day 1 that you send email now let's come to the adding in gcr how to add yourself to the gcr i will just first show a demo now you just watch you don't need to add to this code this is only a demo classroom i'm going to delete this classroom after this orientation right so don't uh, need to add to this demo that i am showing so what you can do is uh, click on this google apps click on this google apps go to this classroom so on when you are in this gmail page click on this google apps 
go to this classroom go to this classroom this is how your landing page will be now you need to add to a google classroom to add to a google classroom so from this page if you click on this google apps you will have a google classroom otherwise also from any browser just to put google classroom and it will take you to a google classroom already right it will take you to a google classroom so you can go that classroom.google.com on this page click on this plus icon so you have to click on this plus icon which is like join class so click on this plus icon and you need to paste a code so i am using a temporary code you don't need to add to this just follow this right so i think i didn't get the complete code. yeah yeah so once you paste the code this will get highlighted and you need to just join so you need to click that plus icon put your code right don't have spaces before and after and then click click join you will be able to join the google classroom let's wait uh, for a second or so so this is uh, it will join you to the google classroom Oh, okay. So I think I have to check the code. Probably I will just check the code. Yeah. So I will check this code. Right. Now let me see. Yes. Yeah. I think I did not paste it correctly. So once you join, this is how your landing page will be. This is how your landing page will be. There are three tabs at the top. One is stream, one is classwork, and this is where all your materials which is posted will be segregated and will be available here. And then there is a people tab. You can see your teachers, and I could see there are already some students who have joined this demo classroom. This is only for demo, so but I'm happy that you know how to join. So you can see who are all your classmates who have joined that particular class. So this is how you should join. Now let us, it's a very important, I want now all of you to follow what I'm going to show. This is to do with your timetable and the code for your actual first year courses. So please pay attention. If you go to the Shastra homepage, so every day, at least once in the morning and once in the evening, you should always have a practice of looking into the portal, see what events are occurring, right? So you, this will create a kind of awareness of the institute that you are going to belong to as part of your learning. Now you will see one thing here now, first year timetable with GCR code and uh, student web interface, SWI stands for student web interface registration click on that there will be three logins i will talk about the second login first then i will come back to the first login the second login is for all these programs other than engineering so the integrated education program the msc integrated b optom bcom ca bcom bfsi uh, this is in the i think in the main campus the law program bsc B, bcom bba bca in the src campus now, if you click here, you will see the timetable pertinent to your program. Now, for the law program, it is not hosted at this juncture here. You will get a separate email. So, you have to see your register number at ac.in. You will get your email from the law program coordinator because they also need to give some special instructions with respect to uniform. So, law alone at this juncture, we didn't put here because we will need to give also some additional instructions towards uh, your dress code uh, for your law courses. 
but eventually the procedure will be same when you get your timetable just follow it up now and uh, you can do it once you get your timetable on your register number or ac dot in this is for the law program other program you just click the program let's say if you are bsc microbiology click it this is how your timetable and these are all the courses the faculty who is taking it and the course code for each of the course like for example your class is beginning on friday right so the third period between 11 to 12 is bis 121 so bis 121 is biological chemistry taken by sujitra madam and the course code i mean uh, sorry the gcr code this is the course code bis 121 is the course code the gcr code is this what you see here similarly for all the programs you can click and you will be able to see it let's say in education right you will see the course codes uh, uh, based on the course codes you can identify the course name the faculty and the gcr code for that for the bcom bfsi again one special instruction please listen there are two sections you have section a and section b you will also get a special uh, instruction you will also get instruction on your register number or ac dot in informing who belongs to which section once your section is known and then use the appropriate gcr code to join this classroom this timetable will also be available in your student web interface which i will showcase but do this after your timetable is mapped so some of you will be in section a and some of you will be in section b other courses are predominantly single section so now itself you will be able to add and then do it so this is what is your timetable and gcr code let's go to the engineering program now for the engineering program both at the main campus and at src you have to put your vtmi number i just got some sample number uh, from the office this could be one of your uh, classmates students just put your number and you will see your name and section at the top and you will see which section you belong to and you will have the timetable pertaining to that session the course codes course name the faculty name and the gcr code so for the engineering you need to put your vtmi number and the moment you put your vtmi number you will be able to see it i just got one or two sample so you have to put your name you will know which section you are belonging to and then you will see your timetable and you will see the code so use this and join the respective google classrooms at least by end of today is that clear i hope this instruction is clear to all use these links and join your respective courses google classrooms for the law students please wait till about the end of today you will get an email with a similar timetable and an instruction follow that the bcom students uh, bcom bfsi students you have two sections so kindly hold on in your student web interface once you're known which section you will belong to then use this gcr code and join the gcr all other programs which have just a single section you can join it now the next one which i'm going to show is about how to activate uh, the first login for your student web interface now where to find student web interface when you are at the landing page of shastra portal if you are on this parents corner there are two one is student web interface another is parent web interface student web interface it's for you it's for you students that is where all your academic transactions you will be able to make what i mean by transaction is the fee payment bona fide request transcript request everything comes in that you will also see your timetable you will see your internal marks grades everything will be captured here parent web interface is also essentially the student web interface only only thing is 
there you will not be able to make transactions you will only see that information parent web interface is for your parents you should inform your parents that there is something called parent web interface the password for parent web interface is only your date of birth and you cannot change for the student web interface you have to change it at your first login you will also know about your mentor in the student web interface and that's very important the name of your mentor will be available and you can reach your mentor now how to reach your mentor if you have not seen the shastra portal i'll just spend a minute on this and come back to the student web interface you click on the schools academic schools click on faculty key list now you choose the school that you want suppose you are from mechanical engineering just click on this and you will see all your faculty and their email ids so you can reach them on this email this is how you have to reach all the faculty the same is also available for src now src people have to click at src home so src home let me just type it it is src.shastra.edu src.shastra.edu this is for the src students and you will see here faculty key list yeah so let me just yeah so you will have your faculty and you will see all your src faculty and their email address so for src students go to src.shastra.com click on this faculty and you will get your faculty's email id this is how you can contact and reach any of your course faculty which is listed here and also your mentor and who is your mentor that will be in your student web interface it's not available today as you log in it will be mapped up by this end of this week or the next week once things are ready once your class starts we will uh, map it now let's me go to the 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 first login instruction for the student web interface so i'm i'm at the portal now uh i'll uh, go to this uh, page on guidelines for student web interface i'll click here i will see a pdf or a powerpoint being loaded so the first is time logging of your student web interface so when you go to your student web interface so how to go to student web interface under parents corner click on the student web interface the first time login for this is your register number and date of birth so you need to put your register number and date of birth the moment you put your register number and date of birth date of birth you should put it as gd mm y y y y what you have given in your application form you will have your information here you will see your name your register number the program right uh, i will also see your mobile number right your mobile number and your email that you have given in your application form you will have your mobile number and email that you have given in the application form so you set your password the moment you set your password you will get otp on your mobile number that otp you need to confirm so you enter your new password confirm put the otp once you get otp it will say registration made successfully i repeat you have to put first time date of birth as your password in the format dd mm y y y y and then you need to put your password the new password confirm it you will get otp in the mobile number that is listed here which was given in your application form put your otp registered and your student web interface is registered once you log in there will be lot of menus some of these would be empty now to begin with because we are in the process of mapping for all of you and it will be completed either by today or tomorrow so when you log in your student web interface you will be able to see your time table so the same time table that i showcased here as pdf with gcr code you will be able to see here only thing is that gcr code may not be available you will just see this box and the legend 
So for the GCR code, you need to use what I have shown here. But in your student web interface, you will be able to see your uh, timetable. And uh, uh, you will also have other menus like mentor, transcript, bona fide request, and everything, including you can also see the tuition fees that you are paid uh, at the time of admission. Everything would be captured there. So that's to do with your uh, uh, student web interface. Now, for a parent web interface, as I said, it is only the date of birth and it cannot be changed. Please inform your parents. So they can also keep track of your academic information. If you have any issues with the student and parent web interface now, or any timetable issues, or if you want to change your mobile number that you have given as in your application form, not immediately, don't get anxious. After this presentation, or once the second session is also over, you, this is a very colorful session with the student life, please send email to Mr. Pineyapan. So Mr. Pineyapan is from our registrar's office. His email ID is pineyapan at admin.shastra.edu, which you have in this PPT now. Indicate your name, register number. If you have already put your email signature, as I shown before, then this is redundant, right? You don't need to write this. Please tell what is your issue, and he will respond to you in a reasonable time frame of one or two days or not to working this rather. So for any issue in student web interface, parent web interface, timetable, GCR code or mobile number, please email to Mr. Pineyapan. The email address is shown here. If you have any issues with your email account, if you have issues with your register number at shastra.ac.in email account, then you need to or if you are not able to recover that email account, despite giving the recovery email address and password, if you are not able to recover, then you need to send email from your, your personal Gmail because your, this Shastra Gmail is not working. So you can send it from your personal Gmail to Mr. Sridhar. The email ID of Mr. Sridhar is sridhar at shastra.edu. So I repeat. For student web interface, parent web interface, timetable, GCR code, changing your mobile uh, number, you need to send email to Mr. Pineyapan. For your email issues, for your issues with your register number at shastra.ac.in, please send email to Mr. Sridhar at sridhar at shastra.edu. So that's about the student and parent web interface. Now I'll show you something on Google Calendar. That is how we usually create links because you need a link to join your classroom, right? Tomorrow, uh, I mean, like from Friday onwards, your classroom begins and you need to join. So how to know which is the meet that you have to join? Faculty will post it in their respective GCRs, but Apart from faculty posting in the GCR, we also put it, schedule it in the Google Calendar. So if you can watch your Google Calendar, you will know how to join it. That is what I'm going to demonstrate. So to do that, let me go to my Google Classroom. So I'll first show you how to add, how to open the Google Calendar first. I am there now on my Google Classroom page. You will see here all your Google Classrooms, right? You will see here a list of all Google Classroom. I'm on a demo ID. You will be going on your respective uh, ID. Click on this course. Click on the course of your GCR. Go to this classwork. Go to this classwork. Click on this calendar. So you have to go to the GCR, go to classwork, click on this calendar. For the first time, it might prompt you to add the calendar. Please enable it. I repeat, for the first time, it might ask you to prompt. It will say that please add this calendar, kindly add it. 
I have already done it yesterday, and that is why it did not show me the prop. But if you click for the first time this calendar, it might ask you uh, to add the classroom into the calendar. Enable it. The, your classroom gets added to the calendar. How can you know the classroom is added to the calendar? Just scroll down. Can you see here? Now I'll remove this holidays in India calendar because I don't want to see that. So if I just remove it, that gets over. Now let's say that uh, next year, next semester, you don't want your previous semester calendars to be there. So you can either remove it or you can just <coughs> click on this cross and that calendar will get removed. Don't remove the calendar of this semester. You have to do it only in the next semester once the course is over. Now let's say the calendar of this current courses are visible here. I will change from week to probably a month view. It is very easier for me to showcase. I have already done for this course. You can see here that there is some time indicated and this is for this particular course. You will have this similarly for a lot of your courses. For you have about six courses means every day you will have three or four and it will be as per the time. If you click it, this is the Google Meet that you have to join for this particular class. For this particular course, at this time, you have to just add, you have to just join this Google Meet. I repeat, if you are in the home page of Google Classroom, click on a course, go to the classwork tab, Click on Google Calendar. First time it will ask you to add. You please add the Google Calendar. How will you know that it is added? You can see that names coming here. You change the view. By default, it could be week. You can even say it as a schedule so that you will only see for two days. For every day, you will see based on the number of courses that you have added. You will see a lot of uh, periods and based on the time you need to click that and join the google meet of that particular class or that particular course or subject so this is how you will join from friday onwards i hope this is clear to all the next thing that i want to show is how will you upload an assignment if it was given to you? Before doing that, let me just release the assignment uh, from my login because I am like the teacher and I need to release the assignment. So only when I release the assignment, you can see it. Um, so I will just release the assignment. I have put a question paper here. Don't worry about that. I have uh, just released the assignment. Once you have released the assignment, right? I mean, once your faculty has released the assignment, your faculty will release the assignment. And then if you go to your Google Classroom of that particular class, you will be able to see an assignment. And now you can see here. Can you see here? It clearly says that there is an assignment and there's a deadline for this assignment. You have to submit by 11 or 12 noon. Now this is only for demo. There's no requirement for you to submit it. Just watch it. Now how to submit this assignment? This can also be some short quizzes. The word assignment is a Google word. I mean the word from GCR, <laughs> but the faculty can use it for even a short quizzes they want to keep, a short test they want to keep. So you need to click that course, go to this classwork, and you will see there will be an assignment here. Click on this assignment and say view assignment. You can download, you can read it, what is the question that is being given. Now, sometimes it can be a PDF upload, sometimes it will be a Word document upload, and sometimes the teacher may have written here, 
they will also write how many marks of this for this assignment sometimes it is ungraded sometimes it is graded it will tell you when you should submit all this information will be available you might write your assignment on a piece of paper and you probably want to upload it now how will you upload it all you have to do is you have to click on this add create right you click on this add or create i want to upload a file so i want i have written on a piece of paper taken an image i want to just do it i click on the file now you need to browse and upload i'm just going to browse and upload this presentation here thinking that uh, that is uh, uh, the assignment that i have done you don't need to do that i'm just showing it again for only a demo purpose so let me just uh, upload let us say that this is a scanned document of what is my assignment and i have just uploaded it right after you have uploaded the assignment it is very important to turn in if you did not turn in it will not get reflected for the faculty so upload your assignment you can add any number of files you can add two files also but i would always prefer unless otherwise it is explicitly stated by your faculty please do not add multiple files if you have 10 sheets on which you have written an assignment scan all the 10 sheets and then upload as a single pdf rename your file with your register number so that it is easy for the faculty to identify whose file is that i repeat to the best always upload as only a single assignment i mean a single file even if you have a graph sheet two three sheets scan it put page numbers scan it make it as one single pdf rename the pdf with your register number and then upload after uploading you can turn it right you can turn it and it will say do you want to turn it yes and you just turn it this is how you will submit the assignment is it clear and now if you go and if you again come back and you again view it shows that you have already submitted any time you can unsubmit it and resubmit it also suppose if by mistake you have submitted an uh, uh, incorrect file and there are still time left that's much more important you cannot do this after the time if you do it after the time it will show to the faculty that you have done late and that's certainly not allowed if it is going to be quizzes test exams and so forth so within the deadline you unsubmit it it will remove right once you unsubmit it you can remove this file so i have removed this file once again follow the same procedure add the file upload the file if it is a google doc directly you can attach a google doc and so and so forth and then say turning here so this is how you need to do your google assignment process i hope this is also clear uh now i'm almost towards the end i repeat the same slide that i have shown you last time that you need to make sure that you are fairly ready for your online classes please join all your google classrooms have uh, if you have access to laptop or a tablet good or at least a good mobile phone is also sufficient make sure you have at least 2 gb per day have a good ambience and a right mindset for learning ensure that you have a good physical health so daily have some physical activity you sweat it out so that your mind and body is fully energetic try always to attend the online class only when it is necessary and due to health or any other functions or something which you could not avoid you can see the recorded classes otherwise always attend the online class you don't only take notes you always make notes also revisit the videos make your notes 
for any help you can reach the deans and associate deans of your respective schools you can find them under your academic menu now i will go to the question answer session so for the question answer session i want to uh, go to the mentimeter so i'll just come out of the screen and i will go to the mentimeter screen again uh, just a minute give me a time let me just share my mentimeter screen i'm going to take questions right from mentimeter but before i do on the mentimeter yeah Yes. So there is a small poll again. I have asked you to pick an appropriate statement. So pick an appropriate statement. So go to menti.com. Put the code again, which you see now: five eight three three five five four eight. Five eight three three five five four eight. And there is a statement there. Choose an appropriate statement. I'll just wait for a minute. About 500, I've already chosen a statement. You have to choose the statement that is more appropriate. So there are four options. Choose a statement that's more appropriate to you. About thousand have already responded. About thousand have already responded. Let's let's see the response. Good. So I think some people are. i am not able to see probably that could be the the law students and also about the bcom students who have sections so please don't worry the law students and the bcom students who have sections you need not worry you will get a email on your register number at ac.in and in your student web interface by end of today or tomorrow morning for the bcom uh, students the section will be mapped you will be able to see your timetable in your student web interface corresponding to that timetable please use the gcr code this is for the uh, bcom ca students who have sections you have to log in if there are sections you have to log in in your student web interface check the timetable in the student web interface and as per that timetable come back to the shastra portal see the gcr code and then join law students nothing to get panicked kindly wait till afternoon or end of today you will get a email in your register number.ac.in with time table with the gcr code and a, a, an additional instruction for you uh, with the dress code for the law courses all others i think uh, you would be able to join and i'm Very happy that some of you have already seen the timetable, some of you have already joined, and some of you said that you have seen and you will join it by end of today. So that's nice. So the next, I'll go to the next question. So I think you have, you can type a word there, right? so you have to type a word there 
if you have an issue whom you will contact like for your student web interface and timetable if you have an issue with your timetable and student web interface whom you will contact with if you have an issue with your timetable and student web interface whom you will contact you need to type i think a word probably there i think there's one text box you need to type it let's wait for people to respond whom you have to contact if you have issues with timetable and student web interface that's a question that's a question whom you will contact in case of issues with timetable and student web interface let's see the answers now let me just show the results ah good so so many have captured that yes if you have issues with timetable and student web interface if you recollect i told you need to email to mr piney appen his email id is given in the guideline document for registration that is being put on the portal right so you can look into the guideline document in the shastra portal and you need to email happy that most of you could recollect that name next question now if you have an issue with your register number dot shastra dot ac dot in what you will do if you have register number not shastra dot ac dot in what you will do if you have register number if you have issues with your register number at shastra.ac.in what you will do a lot of people have already responded so let us see the results good again fantastic so the answer is if you have issues with your register number at shastra.ac.in account 
you need to send email to Mr. Sridhar. This again is in the document which is hosted today. You would see two timetable links. And below that, there is a link for registration and first time login of student web interface. In that PDF, in the last page, I have given the email address of Mr. Sridhar. For your email account issue, you need to send mail to him. Is it clear? It's not to others. Please send email to Mr. Sridhar. This is there in the PPT or in the PDF that is put on the website under uh, the guidelines. Yeah. So now you can post your questions and I will take it up. Please post your questions there. So please post your questions and I will take your questions from Mentimeter directly. No need to post in the orientation chat today for this session. Please post it. Use of signature. Use of signature is very simple. When you send email to somebody else, that person should know who is writing. Right? If I send email to you, right, and your register number is like some numbers at shasara.ac.in, we do not know who is this person, the name, the branch, and everything. And that is why we should have this email signature. Right? So that's the use of email signature. What about our books? This was already uh, answered by the vice chancellor in his first address you will be kept informed probably in the middle of next week uh, because once let's the classes begin from Vijay Dasmi and then you will get information about this this is again the same uh, how to view recorded lectures uh, the recorded lectures of orientation will be curated and posted on YouTube channel of Shastra for your courses for your subjects and courses, your faculty will post it in the GCR itself. So you can see that. The timetable will be same in face-to-face -face class. Yes, mostly it will remain same because that is how we have done the timetable so that you can it, uh, we can switch to the face-to-face -face class. Only thing is during face-to-face -face class, you will additionally have labs also. Uh, Okay, I think it is, uh, your explanation is really good, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot for this compliment. Now you can see in your timetable, you will get to know how many periods are there per day. Uh, the recorded videos of orientation is not uh, yet put. It will be curated. We need to put, see it, trim it, and then you will put it in the YouTube channel and you will get email from your orientation. This is already answered. Uh, can you please explain assignment uploading again? Yes, let me do it. Uh, so when you are on your uh, email, click on Google Classroom. So you will go to the Google Classroom page. You will go to the Google Classroom page. And in the Google Classroom page, if an assignment is released, if a quiz is released, if a test is released, you will see it, right? You can click that and your faculty will also tell in the class when they are going to post an assignment. Click on this classwork tab, you will see an assignment. You will also see the same thing in the stream tab also. So whatever you see here in the classwork, you will also see in the stream tab. You click here. It will take this page. You can read the instructions. You can read the question. You can see what is you are asked to do. You will see your marks for this assignment. And you will also see uh, when you have to submit. Click on this add. Click on this file. Upload the file from your mobile or from your laptop. Make sure you upload only one file. Rename the file 
with your register number upload it as pdf by default unless otherwise there is any other instruction given by the faculty and after uploading let me just upload time being uh, some file here uh, so let's say i'll upload this file and once you have uploaded and you are sure that you want to submit please turn it right just turn it and don't wait till the last moment to turn in always give a reasonable 5 minutes gap between this time so if the time is 11:59 i would expect at least by 11:50 you should submit it because you need to give some contingency for the internet signal time and everything right so that's how you need to upload it how many students per class i would uh, i mean on an average this is uh, 60 but uh, find it out uh, because on the very first day if all of you join your google classroom you will know how many students are there a uh, well, official whatsapp group will be started by your faculty on the first day of class so you don't need to start if everybody starts it will create a chaos so please wait for your first class uh, that the faculty will create for their own courses uh, so i assume that you are a day scholar yes it's allowed and there is a common parking that is made available for students at the entrance it is not allowed inside uh, into, uh, near the academic blocks you need to park it near the entrance no it's not required you don't need to turn on your camera how to switch on the video on gcr so you mean you mean to ask on the google meet i suppose so if you are on the google meet now you can see here at the bottom there is a camera icon so i am putting it off so you can see my face is not visible i will put on and you can see my camera it's visible i think i have already done this when documents should be submitted you mean the certificates i think you will be informed or you can write to the uh, office the registrar's office no by default there will be a number that will be displayed okay the otp will come to that number right whatever the number that you have provided against your name in the application that number will come there by default if you want to change your mobile number you need to first email to mr prani appan get the mobile number changed and then activate your student web interface thanks a lot i have answered please send email to mr prani appan so where this information is there if you go to shastra portal we have given a link time table and student web interface registration click here the first through or time table i have already said time table you can look for engineering from their btmi number for others it is available here now this is a guideline document open this guideline document follow these instruction by default it will be the application number that is given if you are students from abroad and you cannot give an indian number please write to mr prani appan and he will tell you the procedure for that right the otp will only go to an indian number if uh, and the default number that will be here to that number only the otp will go if you want to change your mobile number have any other issues uh, students from abroad please send email to this email id please note it down this is also there in the same pdf which is hosted for issues with email id you have to write it to mr shridhar how i will i interact with my fellow classmates very simple first day you join your class you know all your classmates you can open your uh, uh, personal whatsapp group or slack or i think uh, uh, any other app that you know you can invite them
class there are no classes indicating the same no by default it is from timetable does not have uh, no that's the difference between how you typically have your school timetable and the university timetable the date of beginning commencement of classes is not explicitly mentioned but it is already put in the circular right and it is already put uh, informed by the vice chancellor the classes will begin uh, from the auspicious day of uh, uh, october 15th and this is for all the first year right so this is already put higher semesters the second year law program is going to come here for all the ug the on online classes will start i have already answered this this is going to change it is always good to change a password because you should not allow somebody else to use your official email account so that's one attribute that you should develop yes google calendar is important because only when you have google calendar all your classes uh, will be available there like for example if i open my google calendar now i will be taking the courses right so if i open my google calendar i will have all my schedules available there and that's that will help you to send reminders and notifications so it is very important uh, that you have your google calendar now you can see i have my classes scheduled so this is how we faculty also schedule so similarly you should also do that rather i would ask why you don't want to do Now I think less than 18, you can't put vaccine, right? If you are more than 18, I think it is a common health advisory. It is not by law; it's compulsory. It is a common good health advisory that you should get yourself vaccinated so that you can protect yourself and you can also protect the nation at large. I already answered this. Hostel, you will be informed. Thank you. Uh, offline classes means on campus we hope soon uh, you will get this information uh, keep looking at the portal i think i have already done this it's a formal dress wear what i mean by formal dress wear is jeans is allowed but it should not be having like uh, there are more pockets than the actual pant that should not be the case it as long as it is good looking for the purpose let us have that so we should dress to the occasion and the occasion here is we are learning i have already answered this is also answered uh this is also answered just a minute i'll put off uh, the phone right uh, how to watch recorded videos gcr the the faculty will post the link and then you can watch do you have to bring laptops in campus yes if you have it bring it because that will be helpful not only uh, for watching videos for for accessing other resources also yeah right this is allowed uh yeah it is on the first day of the class you can ask your faculty this is answered no you don't delete it i will do it from my end so please don't intervene with any of the google classrooms uh, because it will create disturbance for other students and other faculty so we should know what we are entitled to do and not others a uh, google calendar uh, so if you are on your uh, google classroom let's say if you are on your google classroom click on this google classroom go to this classwork tab go to this classwork tab click on this google calendar at the first time it will ask you to add 
please add that calendar how will you know that you have added that course you can see here that course the name of the gcr will be applying coming here i mean this whatever is the name of this gcr that will be coming here and you will see the time that it is being scheduled even if an assignment is scheduled that is also be uh, showing up here so that is the benefit of the google calendar uh i think this you need to watch to the shastra portal i'm not the uh, the right person to answer this question yes it's allowed so if you are an undergraduate student put your btma number and uh, uh, ptma number in this link so i'll go to the shastra.com click here if you are an engineering student click here put your btmi number and the moment you btmi number you put you will see your timetable section gcr code and everything so this is answered this again is answered it will be informed i think i have done this so please if you have issues with student web interface and if it is not showing or you are not able to get otp or invalid register number anything you know to whom you should now send email you need to send email to mr pani ampar you need to send email to mr pani ampar if you are not having access to the uh, indian mobile number this is again i have answered i have answered how to understand timetable very nice question uh, let me just quickly show this and maybe with that i will end this could be the last question i just put a demo uh, one btmi number that i have got from office let's say this is your timetable let's take wednesday right every wednesday so you are in section a so this person is abhitej he is in beta computer science and he is in section a and on wednesday let's say the first period is 8:45 to 9:45 is csc 101 so what is csc 101 it is problem solving in c who is going to take this the faculty name is dr r arge student and what is the gcr code for that particular class that is what it is written here this is how it is written now this lunch that is given here i understand you are in home so there is nothing like you need to eat only at that time this lunch is put here because if you come to on campus class this will be your lunch periods so that's why it is put it's not necessarily like when you are home you will have to eat it that way so this is how you need to understand now if you see friday from 315 to 515 you will have csc 101 which is again programming in c lab so friday your first period for the student is english technical communication by dr g venkatraman and this is the course code for that particular class you can access now itself i think i have uh, explained this or maybe i'll just quickly do this and i will end uh, with uh, today so when you are on your gmail click on this uh, when you are on a gmail click on the setting go to see all settings go to signature by default you will not have anything here create a new one write your name so maybe the signature i will say this narain sign this is what i just want to write i just going to have a power shut down so i'll just put off my camera so that i can serve power uh let me go to the gmail here uh, where i was yeah i'll just create it yeah and then now you have to that i'll say now thanks or or i'll say you was uh, faithfully you was obediently so i'll just write my name then i will have to write my affiliation what i mean my affiliation means i have to give my professional details i'll say my register number is like say uh, 125 123 101 something like this 
and I'll say I am a first year from like say BTEC uh, civil engineering. Uh, this is from school of civil engineering. I will say Shastra deemed to be university. Tanjavur, Tamil Nadu. I will put the pin code. I will also put the mobile number so that it is possible for somebody to reach me in case of help. If I want to put my alternate email, that also I will put. So whatever is my uh, email, uh, something like uh, my other email at uh, gmail.com. So this also I will put it. Maybe again I will put this separator. I can bold uh, certain things so that it is very clear to people. Maybe I will bold my name and uh, my register number. I want to be in bold. I can pick the color that I want. And I will say this email signature has to be added to every email that I compose. And to every time I respond, I will just save it. Now, if you compose, you can see this, that it is being coming. At, so you don't need to say that I am Narain from civil engineering and all these things. All this information is already here. So you can directly write there, sir. May uh, like, can you kindly explain, let's say, Newton's law tomorrow once again? Or let's say, I have a issue of logging. I am from whatever UAE and do not have an Indian number. All right. How to register in the student web interface? Like this, you have to compose. And when you send it to somebody, like say in this case, like uh, if it is to Piney Appen, Mr. Piney Appen, you don't need, he does not need all your information because you have clearly provided this and this will help him to send you email, register and everything. So this is how you need to do it. Let me again take the next question. So give us some time and you will be informed. This is answered. Exams is too early. <laughs> Let's the classes begin. I think all this is done. So with that, I will just go to towards the end. We are already time. So I would again use the same slides that I have used in my first presentation. That there is a strength of reflection, able to reflect anytime you can go to your recorded videos and see. It. That's a strength. I understand we cannot have a direct one-to-one -one contact, but you can still leverage if you are committed and make a very good learning. And this is my last slide, that learning is a conscious, continuous commitment of the self. With this, I greet all of you and commencement of your academic journey in your respective degree programs at Shastra. The next session is a very colorful session of your student life at Shastra. So do join for the next session at 11.30. Thank you all and all the best for your great career.